Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Tia No, the Lassies of Onega. I'm your host, Mr. Onega Lover, but we have the Korean War. Addressing the nation in a live televised speech earlier today, the President of Finland has announced that the Russian army units have crossed the border into Finland. Well, the other surprise, German, <coughs> Russian offensive is not known. Attacks by the Romansk People's Republic against Finnish forces have intensified significantly in conjunction with the news of the strike. Up here, so. Um, so, with attacks, Russia has effectively declared war in Finland and launched multi pronged offensives deep into the heart of Onega. The Finnish buffer state set up to insulate Helsinki from the West Russian anarchy as Russian forces advance westwards. Russian spokesmen warn of dire consequences if Finland continues to besiege the Murmansk People's Republic and have ordered Helsinki to cease, to cease the war of aggression against the Russian people and recognize the separatist republic as an independent state. Russia's back with a vengeance. So, we're just kind of hanging out here. Um, they're at war, huh? We have coordination with Finland. Our guns are triple checked, our ammo counted for every soldier, our bunkers stand tall against any sign of instruction from the West, and yet what, why wait? Why should we sit down, twirling our thumbs for the West to come knocking on our doorstep? For us. And for our benefactor, the only reason uh, reasonable Russia uh, is the one that safeguards both our futures. Instead of waiting, we'll send a report from representatives to Helsinki to urge an offensive response, no matter what the shape it takes. Communism is still an insidious threat. Only the one only we can extinguish for good. Focus on offense. We're going to focus on defense. I think that'd be for the best. We can still invest some money stuff, but we're fine for now. Economy, who cares about the economy at a time like this? So we're going to help defend. And if it gets really bad, well, I'll probably just commence in the end. Just to see what happens if we can take them out. Oh. Victory points under... Oh, hello. Victory points underscore 6124com. 272com. Well, I do know TNO is still a little bug, but we'll see what happens. I hope these guys hold out here, but, you know, they're going to start attacking us like crazy, probably. Um, our divisions are okay. They're not great. They are 18 combo, which is nice. And they do have engineers, artillery, and, and you know, recon. So it should be okay, but we do have no manpower. So that's not good. Enemy air support. I don't think they really have air support, so that's good for us. Probably do maybe that, maybe. Gotta keep it honest, because this, this tile is going to get hit hard. Um, we have level 2 forts it's over a river as well. If anything, I want you right here. Because this tile is going to get, it's definitely going to get hit. These tiles need to be up here. These tiles, it's up, so these lower ones, not as concerned. This tile and this tile are the ones that are the most important to hold. Hopefully they start attacking soon. I wanted to show you, oh, and there they go. And we're losing. Forts, huh? Yeah, I knew that this tile would get attacked. I knew this tile would get attacked. Um, I don't want to do force defense because we have literally nothing else we can do about this. Ask them to stop defending. Uh, can't get over there quickly. Because if they broke over the river, we're pretty much screwed. Um, yeah, we're pretty much screwed now at this point. Uh, yeah. Who is it? Republic of Ireland, huh? It is an obligation, which is one I guess I just finished as well, which I'll read too. Um, let's take a look. See, once the Soviet Union stretched from the Baltic to the Bering Sea as an eternal specter of red threatening to swallow the world whole, the Germans destroyed this vision before proceeding to commit the greatest horrors in human history. The deed is done, however, and the Union lies shattered, its pieces melting and fighting with one another. Yet the threat remains in our Congos in the form of the West Russian Revolutionary Front. <clears throat> The duty of all citizens will negative to ensure the defeat of the front, once and for all. All who can work in factories, farms, and fisheries shall labor for longer hours, exchanging sweat and tears for blood. A civil guard shall expand its operations to the whole of Onega. All shall bear this burden for Europe to be free. Every one of us must give their all. With our sacrifice, we shall ensure that Europe maintains liberty and freedom through the ages. Use some anti-tank. Not going to be enough. Yeah, just focus on defense, guys. Um, other than that, we could train our troops, maybe. We could get a little more manpower, maybe. Hung of Italy, which is not bad. We actually took the tile back, which is kind of impressive, not going to lie. We lost 5,000, they lost 16, but we don't have the manpower for this, you know? I want these guys to learn as much as humanly possible, but it's going to take forever to become an infantry specialist to get even more entrenchment. But, uh, yeah, it's not looking good, and we're honestly going to have to probably use consequence because they are not losing manpower and equipment fast enough. Yeah, they have plenty of manpower, and we're destined to lose. I mean, we're, we're only a buffer state, so... Um, Oh, we even lost a division. Oh, Jesus Christ, we already lost a division too. That's not good. Um, so, yeah, I didn't think we'd be able to hold out very well, obviously, but hey, you know what? We'll see what happens. If and we here we're at, everybody. I totally didn't use Khan's commands. Absolutely not use Khan's commands whatsoever to see if we could even do anything about this whole situation. Um, totally didn't use Khan's commands to make sure they inflict we inflicted way more losses on the West Russian Revolutionary Front and only took 16,000 while we only have eight divisions. Totally not. 
I also did help that Finland is also in this war, and they also have like 40 divisions max, so spreading out wasn't so bad. But let's not take a look at the enemy divisions. Yeah, they did not. I don't know, convert them to militia. We captured the plant. Victory for the Guard of West Russia, without any cheats in total. Uh, the foundation of the anti-communist guard as a whole was built on the principle of safeguarding a corner of Russia from the evils of communism and radicalism. For years, we simply rested in the West Bank of Oneka, protected by the Finns and safe from the wars of the region. That was until the guard was forcibly dragged into the conflict when the rising power in West Russia decided it was time to show its power by invading us. And Finland as well. They thought victory was certain, but they were wrong. Magic. Soldiers of the Volunteer Guard marched into Hungles, Vologda, and Siktivkar. The previous overlords of West Russia are no more. Their leaders and generals having fled amidst a chaos now. It's up to us to pick up the pieces in the region and create a new war to clean a Bolshevik autocracy. As a men restore order and hunt down bandits in the war-ravaged territories that have fallen under our control, General Kodopichnikov has made a symbolic gesture and declared the North Russian Republic. From a Hanos, the former stronghold of the WRRF, he made an address where he formally announced the creation of the state and made promises for reforms in democracy. And lands further from Onega in the south, imposing a control has been more difficult, instead of struggling to do that and draining resources. Satellite states have been established. Those deemed loyal to a cause have been placed as warlords of these states. It's their job to keep them under control. Our mission has been accomplished. Our maximal credit rating will be raised, we get an overextended administration, which sucks, and the anti-communist guard will be known as the Northern Russian Republic. What seemed to many is the most likely candidate for the Russian unification has fallen after a disastrous invasion of the Finnish puppet state. The uh, Onega. After a long and hard battle, the Finns and the Russian allies consolidated control over the West and established a North Russian Republic, establishing control over the rest of the region through client states. This also affect the potential unification of Russia since certain. While the West lies shattered, uh, <clears throat> the East stirred from its slumber and uh, the drums of war beat even louder. The Northern Russian Republic must tread carefully, for it is not. Then the young nation may be just one of the more state consumed by the ashes of the old world. The West lies dormant, waiting for a worthy foe. And we have more focuses, huh? Oh my god, we have way more! Oh, well, that's cool. True victory, or the victory. The mission also gets given through the caravan of Karelian Russians, and the prisoners of war when it left for the eastern border was simple. Defend against the WRRF threat, no matter what the cost may be. Any threat presented to Finland was, by extension, a threat we had to deal with. For once, we have come uh, to out victorious in the struggle against the rising power of West Russia, and the fate of the land is in our hands. While we may have achieved our mission, that does not mean that all of our problems are solved, however. Unrest remains, bandits from the, roam the countryside, and we need to decide if we will act on General Korpishnikov's promises for when victory was ensured. Will we restore democracy, even when it could pose a danger to the newly established order? I did not think there would be more content here. Good job, Dev. That's awesome. Um, getting the foreign people, a little bit of debt. Oh, we even have a regional development. Oh, that's, that's so good. Can we, we're not a unifier. I don't think we're a unifier. I do like installing poverty relief, though. That's actually pretty good. It will begin to improve. Um, agriculture's not bad, too, if I remember correctly, because you get more agriculture as well. Construction speed would be nice. Um, kind of like, also, uh, power grid. Uh, I'm a professional. So I'm agriculture, oh yeah. We'll begin to improve as well. 45. Improve healthcare network. I like that, too, as well. Um, well, we can do two of these probably. Spend a little more money. Agriculture and power to increase. Or get better, I should really say. I definitely want to affect the economy, though, so. Really help them out, so. I really didn't think that we'd have here. We're going to have to act. Deal remove dealing with the bandits. Yeah, if we want to live in a different world. Some might think it's difficult to keep a nation stable, losing the leech of a vast array of different political movements, but it's a task we have to achieve if we want to prosperity, or if we want prosperity in North Russia. A delicate balance must be kept between the political liberties and actual stability, and it is up to General Korpishnikov to keep that balance. The newly formed Republican Army, a successor of the Volunteer Guard, is assigned to the task of protecting North Russian citizens and preventing any incidents across our controlled territories. Until the Republic has been stabilized for sure, and bandits or radicals don't cause trouble for local authorities, it'll be up to our army to guard this fledgling democracy. Well, I'm just going to keep it back here because they probably have a lot of supply issues and whatnot, so. That's fine with us for now. Totally didn't use Khan's commands. Oh, we still have surplus too. Huh. The GDP ratio is a huge victory. We're going to have to act. We might have won the, won the noble war against those who try to invade us, but that does not mean that the resistance to the newly declared North Russian Republic has been magically halted. Dozens of small groups of bandits or former soldiers still resist our authority. Hiding in the mountains and launching raids on towns and villages, often they are devoted to the same regimes we fought so hard to bring down. From now on, we can allow this to happen as the rulers of North Russia. The volunteers got our job, besides protecting the nation from the few external threats that exist, is dealing with these bandits. Increased patrols, a recruitment drive, and utilizing local support will all be crucial in restoring order, creating a sense of st safety and stability. Also, I think the Republic of Finland did turn t more towards Germany, which is not good for us, but you know. 
Uh, Finland looks pretty thick, but the North Russian Republic were looking pretty thick too as... Ah, Muscovine is back. So you want to see these guys. You are Rutniemi. National Conservatives. This is a victory, my friends. The victory. Uh, Vladimir Kurpichnikov walked down the central street of Sarkongolsk. Had they not been destroyed forever by the fierce fighting? <clears throat> oh man, I hate political partisans. That's so bad. Um, the signs would inform that he was in the Krasnaya Avenue, which was once bustling with life, but now it's completely quiet. The city was still in ruins. Buildings have been torn down and crumbled, while others have been gutted by the fires. One structure that surprisingly managed to survive was a government building that housed the premier of the WRF and the Politburo Bureau, which was often called the Kremlin. As he walked up the stairs of the building, all he could think of was the final victory he had achieved. Years of struggle in the desolate lands of Onega gone by, but now his people have wanted peace. He can remember the his days as a prisoner of war in Finland, and the promise that the government had made. Should you defeat the front, you will have your freedom. Vladimir entered the Kremlin and saw all the communist symbols and flags, some which he ripped down. Behind him, a small escort of eight men followed, watching out for any dangers as he continued to walk in the building. He closely observed the floors, rooms, and offices. Everything there remained, reminded him of the war he had just fought. But thankfully, one would have been taken down above all. He was glad that all of the Karelian Russians, that seemed destined to be stuck forever in the freezing lands of Onega, could now enjoy a good th life thanks to his accomplishments. The general turned around and spoke to his soldiers. The guard could definitely use a building like this. They all left together. Major General Karbichnikov, you have accomplished your mission. His promise, stability, to spend the guard with armed forces of the Republic. Ooh, he loses a lot of defense. Cost goes way up to remove Finnish dominance. Oh my god, I don't think I want to get rid of that. Okay, Corzo. Oh, that's so good, though. Oh, I don't want to have normal costs. Military professionalism. Um, stability, you decrease ideological stuff here. Um, allows allowed, non-political uh, allowed, oppressive police with regulated police, free the press. You get a research slot. That's pretty good. But I'm not sure how far we can go with this stuff. A strong republic. Oh, we get to choose. Maybe? Or maybe just by the guard. The anti-communist volunteer guard was one of the main apparatuses of the state that Kropitschnikov had set up with the Finnish assistance. It comprised of both the armed forces of the police and the police, making sure that the communists in the regions without control would not be able to organize or pose a serious threat to our power. For the past few years, it certainly served our pseudo-state quite well in its capacities, both military and paramilitary, and served its purpose of satisfaction. But, after long deliberation, Kropitschnikov has seen fit to officially order the disbanding of the volunteer guard in favor of the formation of an official civilian police force and a North Russian Republican Army, the NRRA. This will ensure that a professional force, composed of many who were once in the guard, will best serve the Republic. Oh, I don't want to do that. But we're going to have to act no matter what. 0.71 is still not too bad, in all honesty. Um, research lot. Let's keep working on this stuff. Industry is good to get to. Disbanding the guard. Ugh, that's, ugh, that's so much more cost. But I don't mind pacifying all this stuff and reducing his strength. Pacify Arkhangelsk, because that's closest to us. Arkhangelsk, the former capital of the West Russian Revolutionary Front and the provisional heart of the communist movement following the West Russian War. Centered around some of the most important passages of the White Sea, it now comprises the capital and hinterland. Unfortunately, it's still rife with communist rebels, guerrillas, and dissenters, people who simply don't know how or perhaps when to stop their feudal resistance. We can put forward all the propaganda that we can and talk of reforms and liberalization, but for those who won't listen to compromise well, those are the people who oppose the most danger to our young republic. We can employ the armed forces to hunt down any communist holdouts, and the police will be able to handle those not brave enough to take an active armed stance against our administration. I think up next, what I really think would be good. I'm not, I don't know. What, what is the hospital thing? I don't know how good this is. Healthcare, rudimentary healthcare. That's really not good. Monthly poverty decrease. Ooh, that's not good. I don't like that. I want to get rid of that as fast as possible. Oh, that'd be good too. Healthcare is very nice. Get a hospital. Army XP. Army professionalism is probably the most important thing. More manpower would be very nice as well. Um, prioritize military and industrial development. There's a little bit of you know, saving right now going on. But we do have a cup of coffee to keep us nice and warm as well. Uh, construction workers training expertise a bonus for industry I've got to go for that one first oh, I don't want to do that but we have to we used to have a slight surplus but we're going to not have any surplus when we're down here but passed by Comey perhaps one of the most troubling parts of our new territory Comey was once a center of all things moderate but also all things radical from the most depraved of rightists to the most degenerate of communists Comey welcomed everyone and such it was doomed to collapse but just because their state has failed does not mean that the radicals within the state are no longer posing a threat to our rule in fact if anything they pose a greater threat than ever the years of political maneuvering and posturing has left more Less left, the more radical sectors of the society quite well equipped to stir the masses against the Republic. Thus, we need to compromise with what's left of this Democratic Senate Comey and work with the local political elites to ensure that a rule is one that is palatable to the population of Sictive Car and beyond. Uh, uh so guaranteed neighbors. Oh, okay, ignore this. Unlocks to invite West Russian statelands into a defensive pact. Well, we'll see. 
So I'm trying to build more roads, which would be nice. Economy's gonna go to the crapper. Oh, that's better than Uruguay, huh? God. Oh! Deficit's extremely high. Yeah, that's pretty high for what we have right now. Oh, God. Army expenditures? Well, you're going further down. Okay, that makes me feel better now. Oh, boy. Point one is way better to deal with. Past five of the the so-called neutral zone of Vologda was a problematic pseudo-state that professed that the area under the control was free from political interference from both the Germans and Russians. In reality, though, Vologda was effectively ruled within our fist by the military, which left an in conflict conflicting difficult state. You know what? Ooh, perm. On the other hand, the population is a little issue towards a rule. On the other, though, there are a number of military hotdogs. Some of those gangs of bandits and others quite large that roam the countryside opposing a rule and generally uh, generating a severe issues with their attempts at administering the province. Uh, we'll need to use a combination of popular outreach and armed forces to pass to armed forces to pacify Vologda and pave the way for a rule. Perm? Uh, how much is resistance here? Because I don't want to get involved if there's going to be a lot of resistance, so... Go! Should we get there? Uh, come on, come on. You might be able to get there in time! We do have 10 divisions too, which is pretty nice. Yeah, they'll definitely get there in time. And they'll have time to get some organizations as well. I'm not sure how strong they are. They might be very strong, they might not be. But 18 combo is pretty decent overall. We lose, we lose, but oh well. That's five Plesk. Plesk, once the domain of Red Napoleon, uh, lays under con our control. The effect of this rule, his rule, had on the uh, province of clear. A compliment. A compliant population used a high degree of near permanent military mobilization. This land is harsh and the people harsher. Uh, this, uh, tempered by years of hardship and communist militarism, while some of the most diehard communists still subsisted in Plesk. Plesk. The people are practically begging for liberation under new administration. Let's get to work. Nice. Very nice. Ah, uh, I love coffee. Probably too much. I have a caffeine addiction. Old wound. Nikolai Omelem. Knew there had been something familiar about this place. Standing in the ruins of the hospital in Sharia, not far from Vigyatka. The old general looked down at the floor. Good God, he was, was it really? And Nikolai nudged some rubble with his boot, overturning the masonry to reveal the ashen dust covering the tile beneath. His eyes grew wide. It was. The hexagonical tile work with its alternating blue, yellow, and white hexes brought him back decades back. He remembered clutching a shattered wrist, a wound from a Nazi bullet. His guts had held, been held in by his belt. Barbarossa had just begun, and Amelin's battalion had been rolled over by the panzers. His comrades killed or scattered. Nikolai continued to walk the halls, listening to the stutter of jackhammers and the whining of drills. He remembered the pretty nurses who helped stuff his entrails back in, and the buzz of the lights and shots of the surgeons. A miracle, they had told him. Almost impossible that he was alive. A young Nikolai should have been grateful, ecstatic, but he can only remember staring at those darn tile floors. Strange the fate had brought him back here. Strange, too, that his gut and wrist squirmed with remembered phantom pain as the men of Onega worked to bring the bombed hospital back to working order. Amelin looked out west, towards the, where Germany lay. Such death and horror had spawned from a few, spewed forth from Berlin. And it could again. Nikolai Amelin swore that such a nightmarish tie would never reach Russia again. Death pours from Germany like smog. Keep going with industry for now. We could really use it. Pass by Komi and then pass by Ukta. Ukta, once a princedom of Zukov, was an administrative direction or division of the front before its collapse. In fact, it was one of the main economic regions that remained control for the front following the West Russian War. While well, it's long been abandoned by Zukov and his clique, the scars of war communism still show on these who live in Ukta. Some communist guerrillas roamed the countryside, but after decades of rule under a failed system, it seems that even they are beginning to tire of a cause as long as it's been gone. It's time for extend our administration, Ukta, to purpose in the economic structure that has been so methodically put in place by Zukov and begin getting profit flowing once again from the region. Protected Northern Russia? Yes, please. Nice. The North Russian Republic has fought in blood for every inch of territory that we now control. From our humble origins as Finnish beneficiaries, our leader Kropitschnikov has brought our force from one that has struggled at the periphery of relevance to that of a dominant position in Russia. For that, we are eternally grateful. We've taken action to secure our position and deal with the remaining troublemakers who are incompatible or refuse to cooperate with their vision. We've set up a number of client states that help us extend our dominion by the rest, over the rest of Russia that has been freed by us, but the North Russian Republic is the protector of the region. And never again will Russia fail to or fall to sectarian conflict and political or radicalism. Kropitschnikov's promise. Before the great struggle in West Russia, General Kropitschnikov had made promises to the people under his rule. If authoritarianism was defeated and peace established, he said, then grand reforms would take place. A presidential democracy would be established with regular and free elections, as all, all the parties, movements, and unions whose operations were limited, or even outright banned, would be free to act however they wanted. The, these promises have been made by the war ever since, uh, the fall of Bukharin's Soviet Union, but few have acted on them. With threats to the general's regime eliminated, and a republic formally established, there is now nothing stopping us from completing the reform. 
Gorbachev and his closest advisors are already taking care of that by passing a series of key laws and even drafting an initial constitution. Soon will be a fully fledged democracy. Oh, hello. You're down there, huh? Good luck. Come over here. Keep training. Basically, train until you die. That's what I told my kids. Ah, that's still. That is so pretty darn high. Military austerity. You know what? Does it save us money? Yeah, it does. Looking a little better. Use the surveillance. Perhaps one of the most impressive things that the guard set up with the Finnish assistance of ours, of course, was a pervasive surveillance state where the guard knew the loyalties of the vast majority of the citizens within a rule. This imposing system included a repressive diktat that banned all unions regardless of their political sympathies and the prevention of p public meetings. This has served its purpose quite well, and for a long time we were able to successfully fend off the threat of internal infiltration by communists and other radicals. But as the Republic liberalizes, many have brought into question the continued role of the government in surveilling their citizens. Especially the economic issues of trying to do so all across all of Western Russia. While a third of communists has not yet subsided, we should prepare, or, uh, perhaps ease our operations a little. This way, we can save a bit of money and trouble, as well as assure the people that we're dedicated to a free republic. Education. Who needs an education, right? Let's go with that one too, please. Free the press. Well, the beginning of stability on the horizon for the young republic, a number of draconian measures that we once had to ensure continued existence and compliance to the vision are no longer necessary. The press has long been on our list for reform itself. During the days of the anti communist volunteer guard, we were forced to send to the press and virtually controlled as if it was an organ of the government to prevent communist subversion and continue the image of the guard as a good force for Russia. Now, as the communists are vanquished and the people clamor for more liberties, we finally have the opportunity to give them to them, which should be an easier press campaign or censorship. And return more and more to the created direction of the civilians as long as they don't advocate Bolshevism, of course. North Russian elections. Well, we'll see about that. The monarchist threat. The Russian Revolution in 1917 saw the Romanov family or d dynasty disposed for supposedly forever. The end of the monarchy was widely celebrated by people. And with good reason. The Tsar system was characterized by systematic political, economic, and social oppression. Combined with the autocratic system of government, of course. It was followed by something just as bad, but for, for a few months in 1917. It seemed as if the Russian people had a real chance of democracy and freedom. Uh, yet, as insane as it might be, one of the very real possibilities that nearly occurred was the restoration of imperial Russian rule under Vladimir III and his cronies. While it's since been dealt with, many of his sympathizers remain, causing continued issues for the North Russian Republic. We need to quash these romanticists and their sentiment that the Tsar system was good, or what was best for the Russia, fascist the good of our republic. Threat. Russia was brought to her knees by the fascist neighbors who are west. Even today, fascism oppresses our people and prevents our prosperity, as evidenced by the German occupation of Moscow. Some of the most dangerous warlords in Western Russia even profess fascism as a political solution to the issues that the Russian people faced. And it's scary how many people follow them. We can't allow the extremes of fascism to just leak back into society and poison the foundations of the Republic. A combination of well-thought-out anti-fascist propaganda, forceful action in the targeting of key fascist figures and dissenters within our Congress and beyond will surely protect the young Republic and those in its charge uh, from the dangers of far-right extremism. Acts to neighbors... Hmm... It's not bad, but a free republic. Russian republicanism. Our people have tired of decades of dictatorship and systematic oppression, no matter how much the Bukharin posited. There is anything but he was just that a dictator. The Russian people have not known democracy, and those who remember for the briefest moment when Russia was a republic are too old now to do very much and constitute only a very small fraction of our population. We need to promote the ideas of Russian republicanism among the people, and guard support for a new government in the coming months to ensure that the people will back a sincere government and all those associated with it as a legitimate representations and extensions of the North Russian Republic. Modernization. The uh, state of industry within the territory that we control is simply put terrible. No self-respecting government would let the people in working factories where the best equipment is a tenantous, uh, tenantous risk dating from the Soviet era, and those equipment is virtually falling apart. It's time to modernize their industry so that we can catch up with the rest of the world and make it look alike. Or make it look like for once the Russians have their act together. The Republic knows that it's a mammoth task, but the one that's necessary to ensure that the Republic is best equipped to deal with this future, as well as any external or internal threats that may arise. Got some comments such as, you're playing as who? Someone says, oh, Nega has $25 GDP per cent. Someone says, is this a somewhat, or does Nega have oh, a focus tree in Toolbox Theory 3? Um, so yeah, Onega has his own unique focus tree now, which is actually really cool. Ah. Um, let's see. Someone says, I like how they use German tech. I wish he'd show us a full tech tree, though. Well, if you want to see the full tech tree, that's not bad. Uh, let's take a look-see. Well, there's not really much here. It goes all the way down to 1990. So, I mean, there's not really much down here. In all honesty, at least for this page. 
industry, of course, engineering. Oh, and happy December, everybody. You go all the way down here to 1990. Ooh, Australia tests new first nuclear bomb. Huh? Better microcomputer computing, modern computers. Uh, a lot of radar landings. I mean, there's not really much here. That's why I never explore it because we'll never get down here. That's the setup for the far, 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 far future above the continent strap. What may have trumped the communists? We still don't even beat them. Every factory worker, farmhand, and captured soldiers, potential communist agent. Our entire goal, our entire reason for being, was to prevent the fall of Russia again into Bolshevism. Our people cannot and will not have this happen. A wide propaganda offensive must be undertaken to show the people the issues and dangers associated with communism and the potential threat of communist agents. We need to make sure that not just our administration, but the common Russians themselves. We don't look up for common sympathizers. We need to root the remnants of the communists and ensure that they never again pose a threat to a young republic. Um, let's take a look. See, work training, yes. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, that's not bad either. We could do pretty much everything here, but we don't have to. Maybe that one. Oh, industrial modernization, nice. Modernize it. It's not bad overall. There's a lot of industrial equipment to approve. Let's go with that and we'll do that one maybe next. We'll see. Glad we spent our political power earlier. The socialist deterrent. We've done well to dismantle the communists and their efforts from poisoning the republic, but simply put, it's impossible to kill, discourage, or imprison every leftist in Western Russia. Practically, and practicality doesn't even begin to cover it. So we must do what our republic promised to do when it was founded or perform and liberalize. Some of the more reasonable leftists can be brought into the fold of cooperation if we're willing to grant them certain conditions concessions, like the right to trade unions and limited working hours in a day. At the very least, by doing this, we can appease the left-leaning parties and hopefully shut up the agitators who are too public, popular, or dangerous to silence otherwise. Poverty will get better. Nice. Perm anti-fascist committee, huh? Well. Eight days left. Happy January, everybody. Happy 1968 is now. Yep. Man, they have purchased even under that. Please go right ahead. Should do fine here. Yeah. Enemies not defeated. Good job, guys. Gu uh, guarantee certain rights. What is a democracy without personal freedoms? We do we live in the age past, where tsars and cons dictated to people the will of God? No, we live in a modern world where we're building a free democracy. Thus, of course, like any good democracy, we must be guaranteed civil, certain rights. Civil rights for women and minorities to ensure that they have the basic protection by the government against the harsh reality of what Western Russia has become a decades of German bombing. The principle of idealism guaranteeing these rights will also buy us much new support in areas beyond our typical power base, women in the cities and minorities outside of them. There you go. Probably getting way better here. Oh, we have a deficit though, that's not good. Max that out, that's all on lowest tap tax hike. I'm not sure that would really help us out. Eh, that was a little bit, but it does hurt us too. North Russian elections. It's time for the leader of the Vagar. Vladimir Karpichna got the fall through on the promises made when he took the Russians to Curly on this mission to defend against the WRF and fight for their freedom. Democracy and republicanism will be upheld. The first steps to clearing the North Russian Republic and beginning the first reforms have already been taken. All that's left now is for the actual system promised to make its return to the nation after almost half a century of the Bolshevik stain. Suffrage will be widely expanded to the standards of the modern Western world, and the final preparations for elections of the Republic will soon be completed. General Korpishnikov and his allies will certainly do everything that they can to ensure the people that they, they have these elections for once will be fair, free, and democratic. Ish. What are we building up here? Just roads? That's yeah, not bad to build. Um. Nice. And. It's not bad. Huh, a free republic. 
Well, once we get to March, of course. With the political liberalization measures that we've done recently, our political structure today, or taken recently, our political structure today looks completely different from what it was mere years ago, no months, no, no months ago. Both internally and externally, with our state directly and otherwise controlled the vast majority of Western Russia, we've earned, perhaps accidentally, a degree of political legitimacy, both among the people and the international community. Our leaders who wanted to capitalize on this have since suggested that a North Russian Republic emphasized their democratic connections to the Russian Republic of 1917, the tragically short-lived attempt at Russian democracy. But drawing parallels will help both our domestic and international image. Why not? We'll do that one next. Um, looking pretty good so far. Access to the neighbors. Well, we've set up a large network of puppets, statelets, and the client states throughout the areas of Western Russia that we can now or will not govern. There's little official standardized interaction between our government and the rest of the statelets. Thus, we should work to contact each and every one of them to make sure that they understand what's expected of them and what sort of rights we reserve over the local administrations. Rights, including ours, of course, and provisions, know the need to have free and unrestricted movement and military access across the whole of Western Russia for the North Russian Republican Army and our sons to ensure that the maximum degree of protection for both ourselves and those who serve us. Nice. Oh, and happy April. We're blitzing through these months pretty darn quickly. All right. Uh, Sukarno resigns. I still have a pretty bad deficit. Oh, we've dead. Oh, God. That's not good. That's not good. Military austerity, maybe? I guess it doesn't really help either. Of course, spending more money here doesn't help either as well. Huh. Elections in the Free Republic. Men and women of North Russia, today is a glorious day that a nation should be proud of. Though the coordinated efforts of our every branch and body of the caretaker government, democracy has been restored, these lands of free elections have been held. Um, I'm proud to announce that not only the process been completely smooth and executed as intended, but as per the latest results, I've led him to has been elected as the first president of the country. The candidates had to run in the presidential race for many, reflecting on the open, diverse political climate cultivated here. With a difference of more than 8%, the Republican Party of the North, Russian North has won. As I said, I will be inaugurated as president. I wish to thank you for all of your political participa participation. I promise to you that you will not regard this vote. I've stood for the Republic since its foundation, ever since we set foot on the banks of the Onega River and began the struggle for liberty. The anti communist Volunteer Guard has made a valiant effort to liberalize the region, and now that it's succeeded, the people seem to have considered its lead as a fake candidate for president. With these powers, it would be my first power to uphold the principles of the democracy that we fought for, and to begin the reconstruction of the northern Russia. Once again, it's been an honor. Long live our Republic. Huh. Really, really changed very much, did we? Hmm... Developmental subsidies. Discrimination doesn't improve though. Don't look at the debt. Let's not look at that. Let's not talk about that. Encourage political thought. More stability is not bad, but. Healthcare. Happy May. Hey, credit rating is raised as well, which is really good for us too. Still have a yearly deficit. So, this is probably a bad idea. I didn't do very much. Okay, never mind. Ah, access to the neighbors. A free republic. A strong republic. Guaranteeing the neighbors. Despite our, during the conquest of Western Russia, we delegated administration to a number of statelets and client states over large swaths of territory that we control. Make no mistake, of course, these client states are firmly under our thumb, but we need to make sure that the leaders of these new states, as well as the rest of the world, are aware that they are under the thumb of the North Russian Republic, and that we, as well as the North Russian Republican Army, are the primary defenders of these statelets, as well as the freedom of our young republic and those who serve it. We should not say we are guaranteeing the independence of all of our new neighbors. We we'll do well to remember and serve the North Russian Republic. Oh, I've been. Ooh, okay. Well, first states would be good to improve upon. Here, that's point one now. It's better. Keep drinking it. So now we're B, which is not bad. Higher debt ceiling, which is good. Effect on debt and growth as goes down. Close out of that one. Oh god. 
I'm gonna throw us over the edge a little bit. 101.3%. Not good. Former defense pack. Now the set of the new regimes across West Russia, introducing the infrastructure of interstate cooperation. We should work to make sure that the interstate cooperation is de deepened and primarily focused on the mutual defense of our new states. Already, delegates and representatives from these areas are preparing the local politicians as strongmen for our ultimate plan. The creation of a defensive pact throughout all the statelets of Western Russia and ensure that neither of us nor the West of our newfound allies are ever threatened by external threats again. Hungary. Hawks may target one state, but with all of us together, it will be a different, uh, uh, fearsome deterrent. Yeah. Don't worry about the debt. Not that bad. Not that bad. No more taxes. That's not bad research. Go from rudimentary to basic, probably. That'd be nice. We're paternalistic conservatives here, apparently. Oh, give us some more growth. That'd, that'd be nice. And then a strong republic. Our new territories and allies have finally been stabilized with the North Russian Republican Army, while established to protect not just our lands but the entirety of Western Russia. We fight to declare ourselves a strong republic. One that's not only interested in the preservation of the self, but also the order and nascent peace that our long and bloody conquests have knitted us. With no rest, no peace, the Russian people suffer. But the order that we brought to what was once anarchy preserved people for the foreseeable future. Okay, maybe one more. That did nothing. Okay, then, never mind. Never mind. A little more debt, that's okay, right? 108%, now it's not bad. Test is looking a little better. Never mind. Oh. Oh, expenditures. Oh, military spending did go down. Oh, four billion. Oh, boy. And a strong republic. See if there's anything else I hear. 1.66. Not bad. Invest in heavy machine. I'd love to do. Defensive pact. Oh, the free city. Or we could just cheat and get the political power we need for all this stuff. We might do that. Okay, it's looking a little better though. One point six six, huh? The Tartars, the Assembly, the Prince, Udmurt Republic of Bashkir, the Free City. Let's do, let's do the Free City first, and I'll probably just count commands to see what else we got around here. Oh god, the UK's reformed, huh? Eight days, I guess we'll see. Seven days. Nope. Goodbye, rule Britannia. Whatever. Get us to another month. That's what I really care about. Hey, 103%, not bad. Deficit's not good, though. The Free City. Andrei Lavrov sat across a heavy oak table from the current ruler of the city of Nov Ninsi Novgorod, Konstantin Katushev. Lavrov was a career military man better suited to the front lines than the diplomatic service, but the consolidation of the suddenly expanded territory of the N NRR, as and as the commander of the North Russian Republic forces in the areas they had all they had on in hand. Lavrov had been talks with the new leader of the Free City for hours now. While they made great strides in negotiating a treaty between the city and the NRR, long negotiations were starting to wear thin for both of them. Multiple times throughout the day, Lavrov had a thought of breaking out the talks and simply ordering his men to secure the city, but had held himself in check, most because of the stiff resistance the populace would put up. So merely, the Katoshev came close to calling things off multiple times by now. Finally, after a long lunch, Lavrov and Katoshev presided over the signing of a treaty that would ensure the Free City's autonomy and mutual defense against outside aggression. With the signing of the treaty, the Free City of Ninsi Novgorod and the North Russian Republic were officially state, officially allies against the Russian anarchy. A mutually the beneficial Tartar. agreement. In the presidential palace of the Tartar Republic, a badly renovated governor's residence from the imperial era, Mikhail Ak Alexievich and Ibram Minzgaziev discussed the options of the Tartar people. Alexievich was an old bureaucrat from the early days of Kerensky's government in the Civil War. More than all of that, he was an expert in the diplomatic scene. 
Ibrahim was eager to secure a future for the people of the Republic, but was very hesitant to put the lives of his people in the hands of those same men who repressed them in the old days, at the same time knew that the Tatar Republic could not survive alone. Mr. Alexievich, our talks have been very fruitful thus far, but before we continue, I would like to assure certain assur- assurances. Ibrahim was insistent. The talks had gone on for three more hours by that point, and though much progress had been made, the hesitancy of the NRR to commit fully to the Tatar time gave him pause. In your terms, my friend, I'll do everything in my power to see them done, Alexievich was serious, not necessarily because of any high ideals, but the defense of Russia from extremist forces. There must be assurances that your government will not attempt to infringe on Tatar autonomy. If they cannot, then we all have done years' waste of time. I'll do all that I can to see their terms of remand. You have my word, the bureaucrat said. With that very tentative assurance, Abraham was reluctantly preparing to send the chief. A new dawn for the Tatar people? Well, maybe we'll see. The assembly. In a musty room in the former headquarters of the ROA, Viktor Polyakov was deep in talks with a very shady man from the North Russian Republic. The man, Alexander Ivanov, spoke with the voices of honey. With the voice of honey, those his eyes held a dark glint. As they talked, it became clear that Victor was completely out of his depth. Alexander was quick to take advantage of the engineer's na- naivety and experience in order to craft favorable terms to the NRR. Though the uh, treaty that came from Ivanov's underhanded tactics was somewhat a plain grab for influence of the region, it so afforded the assembly protection from threats to its sovereignty and ensured that they were insulated against untoward influence, aside from the NRR for influence, of course. After an hour of schmoozing, Victor and his supporters were convinced of the contents of the treaty. With this web above pen, the People's Assembly of Samara was afforded the protection of the North Russian Republic. Over the course of the next week, Alexander would ingratiate himself or with Victor and his people, promising shipments of luxury goods unseen in Samara for years and, over the next days signing, since signing the, of the treaty, a safe full of new furniture, fruits, meats, and clothing entered the homes of Samara through the back channels of the NRR and the Isles of Finland. A good deal, yes, the prince. In the palace of Vladimir III, the new prince of Yatka and his court, along with the representative from the Maori Republic, met the delegation from the North Russian Republic. Prince Boris was a man that simply oozed charisma. He relied on that charisma throughout his life, and it served him well today as he ran circles around the inexperienced man from the NRR. I recently promoted soldiers from Olnega and turned the negotiations in favor of his new principality of Vyatka, and to a very lesser extent to the Mari Republic. No, no, I insist. You must simply take this gift. The prince of Vyatka was a magnanimous man if he didn't test him one, or didn't test him. Uh, if one didn't test him, and he knew how to get what he wanted. Colonel Zakhilov, the representative for Monega, came to Vyaka, prepared to grant concessions, but he had been taken in by the prince's charms. As a result, Boris was able to weasel more and more concessions from the Republic. If you insist, Your Highness, the colonel knew that he was out of his depth. He had grown up in Onega and had been fast-tracked to service with the anti communist guard. His whole life had been dedicated to fighting the communists, so little uh, thought to politics of all things. Now he was responsible for negotiations better handled by a team of diplomats, not a man barely to his thirties granted responsibilities far above his abilities. Now, my friend, I believe we have the treaty to sign. Yes, of course, long live the prince. The Udmart Republic. It was a crisp morning, crisp morning in the Ivetsk, when the North, the Russian Republic's representative, entered the government headquarters of the Udmurt Republic. It was a perfect example of the eclectic and slapdash nature of the NRR. Born and raised in Sweden, uh, William Johnson, uh, Johansson, was, was a diplomat to his corps. In the chaos of the West Russian War, he'd volunteered with the Finnish military to beat back the communists, and afterwards he'd settled in Onega with an anti communist guard. Now, he put his education in the diplomatic arena to good use for his new homeland. Over the course of the next week, William and the recently elected leader of the Republic, Yakov Ilizarovich, Panteliyev negotiated a treaty of trade and mutual assistance. Though Panteliyev had little experience in the political arena, he held his own. Foremost, he held the interests of the people in mind and contested any terms that looked to the shock of the Udmurt people. At the end of the day, the North Russian Republic and the Udmurt people, Republic wanted the same thing, at least in the short term. It was a simple matter to ensure the sovereignty of the Udmurt Republic, as the situation in West Russia precluded any consolidated requests of the region, conquest of the region, and the Republic would become yet another member of the Alliance of the Network that would hopefully keep West Russia at peace. In the aftermath of signing the treaty, William would find that he quite liked the people of Ivetsk. Perhaps he would request a permanent station in the city. He was growing fond of it. A treaty signed a newfound home. anti fascist the perm. The road to the perm was an ominous one. A palpable gloom had descended on one of a hybrid city, and even so long after the fall of the brother, there were signs everywhere of his influence. Murals depicting the victories of the so-called Aryan race, statues to the brother's unholy patrons, and the burned-out storefronts of those not pure enough for the cult's liking. It all painted a picture of a city oppressed by the worst of humanity. In truth, the sight of his childhood home in such a state was almost enough to bring Colonel Ivan Smirnov to tears. When the motorcade pulled up to the central government building in permanent intimidation of the wasteful of Oksala in Germania, he saw the first glimmer of the hope for his own home. They were waiting at the end of the steps leading to the building. Well, surely man you had known for years. Alexander, you old dude, you're still alive? What was the first words of Ali Ivan's mouth as he stepped out of the car? Ivan had known Alexander for years. They had been childhood friends and had fought together in the Great Patriotic War. Last time he had seen his friend had been in one of the USSR's final doomed defenses in the Ukraine. Ivan, Alexander's voice boomed. How good is it is to see you? And a colonel, I last remembered you would have soon your charge head first in the German lines before becoming an officer. Times change, my friend, times change. It was true. In the old days, he hated the officers more than anything. And yet he was here, a dedicated officer to the new Russian state. All too true, come my friend. Well, we have much to discuss over drinks, perhaps? 
One drink turned to three, which turned to twelve. After that, all was a blur. By the next day, Ivan Alexander hashed out a surprisingly extensive treaty. One that would assure perm safety and prosperity. All friends and new partners in the Bashkir question. The diplomatic convoy arrived at the newly rebuilt presidential palace of the Republic of Bashkiristan. With little fanfare, the representative from the North Russian Republic, surely a military man named Yuri, who was originally from Perm, stepped out of his armored car and led by a functionary to a conference room set aside for the negotiations. His counterpart was a local man by the name of uh, Verakzama, Verakzaman Zagafranov. He had been in support of Bashkir rights in the Soviet bureaucracy and had seen a perfect choice for the North Russian Republic to take place in charge of the former republic. In Yuri's opinion, the man did not deserve to shine his shoes, much less lead a secessionist party in rightful Russian lands. Negotiations would last for a whole week before the real progress was made. As an experienced bureaucrat pushed in just the right places for as much as negotiations, Yuri refused to entertain the possibility of anything less than full subordination of the Bashkirs under the NRR. The very idea of Russian land under the control of Muslim dogs made his skin crawl. In the end, Yuri would be escorted out of the building by his own guards, spewing racial slurs and demanding the annexation of the Bashkir lands after a phone call from the NRR's headquarters. It was released from duty, and his place was an ethnic Bashkir who was much more amenable to the terms put forward by Zagafaronov. It would take only three more days for the treaty to be signed, and the Bashkir people were once again secured in their independence. At last, peace. But I think that's going to be it for us here. Um, I don't see really anything else for us here to do. Um, I would like to annex everyone else that we have down here. And our debt's kind of going crazy, but... We just made it that way because, uh, well, we still would like to expand at least a little bit. But I think I'm going to end it here, guys. If you enjoyed the video, because it was a lot of fun playing as Onega, a lot of fun, please do consider leaving a like. What's the Russian defense pact? Uh, we would probably get screwed over by the Ionite spec, though. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. Um, if you'd like to read about better agricultural methods, please go right ahead. And for this bread, we thank thee. I'll see y'all and better research better facilities. Um, and then another campaign thanks for watching have a great 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 rest of your day